Hey everybody, I know it's been a while. I actually kind of have a job now, so I haven't been able to make videos as much as I would have liked to. Uh, but I thought I'd take a quick minute to make a video about a question that I've been getting. Probably the most asked modding related question that I've gotten has been in regards to the way I power the hard drives in a lot of my machines, like you've seen in the OS Xbox Pro, uh, as well as the Black Dwarf and the Cinematograph even. Um, the connectors that I use to kind of create that nice, neat um, wiring system that I do. And what they are basically are inline uh, SATA serial ATA connectors that um, I actually get through these, which are Molex 2 serial ATA cable adapters. Now these you can basically find anywhere that sells, um, you know, serial ATA cables or any sort of computer cables. These you can see in particular, the wire doesn't actually terminate with them, they, they pass right through, and that allows you to basically put as many as you want, and they're able to just snap into the wire. Now I've seen some places just sell the connectors, uh, but usually they're kind of a ripoff, and uh, the way I've found to do it is, I think the best place I've found to buy them has been eBay. If you just go on to eBay and search uh, SATA, in line, you're likely to find a lot. And you pretty much just have to go by the picture, look at the picture online and make sure it's the one that you want. Now if you actually want to use them the way that I'm using them, you have to take them apart first. Um, so that just takes a small screwdriver or even a knife. Um, and you can see there's kind of little latches at the very sides. So you just basically have to get right underneath these little latches and gently pry them up and then sort of ease the cap off at the same time. And uh, sometimes you can get it done with one side and just kind of peeling it off. You might snap the little tabs. Uh, you can see they fit only in one direction. Um, so you gotta make sure you put them on the right way. You can, you can kind of see it better. That side goes with that side. As opposed to that. Um, but you might snap the tabs, which isn't the end of the world, because they fit pretty snug snugly, and you can even add like a dab of super glue or something um, to help keep it in place, which I have done. But once you do that, you can see the way the wire just kind of, with its insulation on, uh, just slips right in between those little sharp uh, prongs, and they just peel out exactly like they go in. So you end up with that. So. In the end, that's what you end up that you're actually going to be using. And uh, you can see here's the other one will take off. What's left of the wire? Um, I don't know if you want to take... You can use a Molex remover if you want to keep the connectors or if you want to keep the wire for any reason. But uh, that's pretty much all I'll be using. Uh, for myself. See this one, just the uh, the tab actually kind of just broke off. But again, it's it stays on there pretty well without it, so it's not that big of a deal. So that's enough for now. Um, so again, there's a uh, a bunch of just the connectors we removed. And one important thing you might notice is that for these that come in these adapters, uh, they'll usually, uh, the one on the end will be slightly different from the one on the middle. The one on the middle is great because it's ready to go. Um, and you can see that the cap, which sort of protects the connections, has those slots all the way through so the wire can pass right through. Now the one on the very end will oftentimes only have that on one of the sides, and the other side will kind of be flat um, to prevent the cut wire from being exposed. So you may only be, depending on how much work you want to do, you may just use the middle one and keep the end one for when you actually have an end of a cable, which you will uh, for every cable, but if you're doing five or six in a line, you might either want to throw, you might end up throwing a few of these away, or you can take a uh, like a Dremel with a point and actually just file that end down or cut it down, um, which is what I've done a couple of times because usually I have a line of 
six or seven hard drives. So once we have the connectors, um, here we have an old power supply that I'm kind of demonstrating with. Then we could take whatever cable we have free that we wanted to power the um, power the drives with any auxiliary four wire uh, cable. And uh, in this case, we won't be using these four pin Molex connectors. So we can go ahead. And what you would do is you'd measure it and see where your farthest drive is going to be. And then I just use scissors. You can use wire cutters or whatever you want and just cut off the ends. So this will be where your last cable goes. And then you can wire the connectors we just cut out anywhere in the middle of them. So you want to start by grabbing the actual SATA power side of one of these connectors. I usually just reference, because I actually don't remember myself, um, what order they go in. So going from the opposite side here, that's going to be the yellow 12 volt uh, ground, red 5 volt ground, and then the last space, which is actually by that L side, um, would normally be a 3.3, .3, an orange line, but you don't actually need that orange line. So you'll see just like in the, the Molex adapters we got, it's just empty. Now it's usually easiest not to start at the very end of the cable. So when I said cut it earlier, um, you should probably cut about an inch above where you plan on having the last, the length of the last wire be. And you just go ahead, get the wire in between those prongs and just kind of press it in. And then you'll need some sort of tool to actually push it in. In this case, I'm using a flathead Phillip, uh, screwdriver and just pushing it in down so it seats properly in the connector. And then you just do those for the rest in, in the proper order. Uh, leaving about the same amount of space uh, on the ends of the wires sticking out because otherwise the actual cable length is going to kind of be um, twisting and doing some weird stuff. And that's pretty much what you end up with. And so once you're at that point, you're going to go ahead and want to cut, if this is the end piece, which obviously it is, uh, just cut those as close as you can. And then again, since this is the actual end, make sure you get the, uh, the cap with one side shielded. And then you should be able to press these ends on. Like so. And then you have a power supply with a seal ATA connector on it. And then of course you can go ahead and making sure the wires are again in the right order. It's a lot easier at this point to make sure they are in because you just straighten them out from the lead wire that you did. And then figure out where you want your next hard drive to be, how long the cord needs to be in between and make sure the connector is oriented again and then just get it into place and then just push the wires into the connector like we did on the end piece and there we go and then once you kinda uh, get the hang of what this is and how you use it um, you can then even use your own wire and if you're careful to make sure you know which wire is going where um, you don't even have to use the you know the yellow, red, black wires. Um, like what I usually do is I just use black wires. A lot of people sleeve each wire, which I don't really have the patience for. Um, but I sleeve it for the length of the wire, and then once you get to each wire, this is from the desk, my other computer. Um, you can see I have a lot of hard drives kind of very, very close to each other, and it all ends up looking very neat and uniform and it's all just um, black wires unsleeved and uh, on this end it was for a modular PSU so um, you know once you're getting into wiring you can get uh, you can get some other stuff like they sell like they sell Molex connectors here I used a black one uh, for the cable I just showed you these black Molex connectors and the pins that you would crimp on with a special 
tool. Uh, or if you don't have a modular PSU, what you can do is cut one of these extra cables, do your complex you know, uh, cable array, and then splice them in by soldering to them together. There's some other guides if you're looking into splicing wires and doing that sort of thing, um, if you search that. Uh, but that's another great way to customize the wires, and if you have a lot of hard drives or a lot of one particular type of accessory that your PSU isn't already pre-set up for, um, this is a great way to kind of get started tidying that up and making sure everything looks great. So I hope that answers some of the questions about the um, hard drive wiring people have been asking me. Uh, I'll try to get some more videos out with a little more frequency, hopefully. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks for watching.